Hi everyone, I'm just going over some last minute little details of these beautiful ornament holiday cards and I wanted to show you just how easy it is. So let's make our own together. All right, for this card we're going to need a round six, a round two for the detail, and also a two tenths for the very fine details. The color palette is up to you. Today I'm gonna to be using a mix of red and greens and then I'm going to be using my Calero Pearl Colors for my iridescent metallic details. I'm going to be using watercolor pencils to draw out my lines for my colors and shapes. This one I am doing two. This is a five by seven sheet that I have taped off about half an inch all the way around because for this one I wanna be able to cut this edge frame off and put a backing piece of paper behind it. Whereas this one is a true five by seven and I was able to fit three ornaments on here, but it's a lot of extra work, another ornament. So we are going to work in just two today. I'm gonna to use my kneaded eraser to dab out some of this pencil and make it a very faint line. Now I don't do this every time, but I'm going to do a very light wash on the back of the colors that I have chosen for these ornaments, which are red and green. So I'm just wetting the ornament and this will help the light color to go on smoother, more evenly, and it'll just kind of give you a nicer effect than wet on dry. But this also is fun too, because if you didn't want to do a straight light wash, you could just do basically drops of color and make them kind of like that all over. And that would look really pretty on the background for when you have, you could leave some stripes with no iridescence, no detail, and just have it be a stripe and then you can accentuate some of those blooms that you've left in there and that can be part of the you can already start setting up your patterns in this phase if you would like so I just put in you can see I just put in a couple drops of that color and this is probably a little darker than I want but it'll work just fine and then I just kept adding water to my brush to dilute and move that color around Make sure our brush is clean before we move on to the green. And one of the reasons why I like this card so much is because kind of like all the others, it's just a cathartic, relaxing experience for me because it's patterns and geometrical shapes. And I just find that so relaxing to paint. And I don't want to say not think about because there is a lot of thought that goes into these, the patterns of these ornaments, but it's just a different kind of thought. It's, it's like a freeing because I'm more comfortable with doing those lines and stripes and diamonds, those kinds of things. I'm more comfortable with that. So for me, it's just easy to just move through it and it's, it's fun to think, okay, well, I've got to, I've got to squiggle here. So I want to be able to put some lines here and I can't, you know, I don't want to double up on the squiggles and all those kinds of things. So, okay, so here we've got our green, very light. And I'll link the colors that I chose for this because I'm not really sure now. They're a mix of um, holiday mix that's already on my palette. I'm just kind of reusing mixes from other cards. I'll take some time to go through and let y'all know exactly what colors I am using in the descriptions. All right, we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back and do our lines with our colored pencil. And that way when we add our darker color on top, it's just going to blend into the color and it won't be, it won't stand out. It won't be like a pencil mark. All right, so our ornaments have dried. We're going to use our ruler here I changed out my watercolor pencils. A little darker of a red and darker of a green. 
more of like a pinky red, I guess, maroon maybe. And here's where I do a little bit of the pre-planning. And what helps me is to kind of mirror both sides so I wind up with even amounts of lines and spaces and it makes it a little easier for me to juggle having wavy lines and then having straight lines. So I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna do like a cap, kind of on the top, a thick cap, and then I'm just gonna mimic that down here. So these are, you know, replicating hand-painted ornaments, so it doesn't have to be super precise. It just gives me a little bit of direction. I'm gonna do maybe a couple of these lines. And then I'll do the same here. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. That one I think is a little bit bigger, but it's okay. And then I think what I'm gonna do is make three larger lines, spaces in here. But you could go do it. We'll do it a different way on the green ones just so you can see. So there's one, and then this one will make two and three, the biggest. Okay. All right, so that way we at least have a little bit, you know, we can kind of go back and forth. If you wanted to just come up with basically one, two, three, four, five patterns, and then you can just mimic. So you can do the same here, the same here, the same here same here and then you know a spectacular one in the middle or however you want to do it so these are just kind of it's just good guidelines for me to be able to start and not get overwhelmed with where I'm gonna start what I'm gonna start with how I'm gonna do it it just kind of allows me to move through all of that a little easier so now with these filling in spaces I can pretty much use my size 6 so let's see what we have here. We have some of this darker red. So I'm just gonna start with filling in some of these lines or sections. So for this stripe here, I just added some water to my brush after I fin finished painting that bottom section and used this lighter red to fill in this stripe. And I'm just mimicking, just doing the top and the bottom the same. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of pink. I have a little bit of pink here and I'm just gonna add it to the red create a little different color. It's probably gonna be kind of light too. And this pink that I'm adding is called cold pink. That much I know. Oh no! Okay. Well, this is a good example of how we handle things like this. I'm gonna take a clean, wet brush and just kind of buff it out and red is really hard because it stays but look we did it looks so good okay but that kind of stuff happens so don't freak out you can either make it a part of the piece or see if you can scrub it out so I think I'm gonna try and make this one this snazzy large middle color here seeing how that just gives it gave it a little bit of pink just a touch different shade. See, and these are kind of lighter colors, so what I can do is add in some bleeds of our darker red, this one here. And it kind of already creates the like polka dot effect already. So when it dries, 
It's a little wet, I think. I think our pinky color is a little wet still because those aren't showing up. So we'll give that a minute to dry and then we will add them in here in a minute. Ooh, that's pretty, I already like that. So then what we can do with our size two detail brush is come in and do some lines, some fun squiggles. We can do things before we add in the metallic like um, polka dots and things like that. So I think I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna give it a minute to think about it. I'm gonna move on to the green before I do anything because I wanna see how they balance each other out. All right, so since I started with, you know, kind of like a solid red up here, I think I'm gonna skip doing the solid green on this section and I guess just move right to this section here. So let's see. Okay. Oh, that looks so lovely. Those greens all blend really well together. It's looking nice. Okay. All right, so we can move now on to, back to the red. So one of the other things that you kind of have to strategize is when you're doing your details, since I'm using these metallics, I'm gonna think, okay, I'm gonna save these pink ones for this ornament. And then I also am gonna have to make a um, topper, thing like that. And so what color do I want that to be? So I think I'm going, I really like this color, I think, with the green. And so I think I'm gonna do, maybe I can do these two for the green, these three for the pink, and then I can do this lighter color for the top. So I think, I think on this darker red, I'm gonna go with a lighter pink. I think I'll go with the medium pink. All right, so I've got my size two. And now I'm just gonna kinda work in some of these details. So again, I'm gonna make another, I have to make another line here. So I'm just gonna start at the top. And then that'll help me draw my line. That's why I like drawing my lines. It just takes all the guesswork out. It makes it a little easier to just move through it. All right, so I'm gonna mimic that same pattern down here. Oh, so pretty already. Each step gets prettier and prettier. So I think for this one I'm gonna use a darker pink since it's a lighter, lighter shade. I think I'm just gonna do like one line. And then I kind of just straighten it up a bit if it needs it. So we can always add little dots in here. We can always add more things. It's just layer by layer, looking at it and seeing what it needs. Maybe what we should do here is do some polka dots. And we can do stick with the darker pink. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some smaller ones. And then we can enclose them with more with another circle. So we'll let all that dry. And then I think what we can do, take our smaller brush. For some reason that number two, I can't, it's not detailed enough for me. I think normally because when I paint this, I'm my head is right over it. <laughs> and since I'm on camera, I can't do that. So I'm having to practice different angles and uh, strategies for myself today. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go back to my red color palette and mix up a color for some very thin stripes on this somewhat lighter color here. And then in between these, I can put metallic. Or polka dots or whatever. Okay, that looks nice. All right, and then here we talked about doing the press. So I'm gonna use some of this 
the brighter pink that I have. Let's see. This is that uh, cold pink. Okay. So we start it with, and I'm gonna do this one, try and do this one kind of big because it's a large space. So do a thin line and then just push your whole brush down, bring it up and do a thin line again. Push your whole brush down, bring it up, draw it out. This maybe we can make a little bit. larger and then we'll add some more color. Okay, so we'll add some detail to that when it dries. I think I'm gonna do some kind of star, I call them star dots. Let me see what color. I'll do this light pink, I don't think I've used it much. But basically I do these four dots kind of in a um, star pattern. So we can do one, like that. Move over. Another four. And it really is just as much as your imagination will allow you for these cards. And I even tried to look up hand-painted ornaments, old-timey ones, and wasn't much on there for inspiration for me. But some of you might have some at home that are special to you and you can take beautiful little bits and bobs from those and make an even more meaningful uh, ornament for someone. Now I think we'll use the same pretty pink and draw the circles around these, the, these metallic dots. I love to experimenting with colors with these ornament cards because you wouldn't think that this hot pink necessarily would go with kind of this maroon red, but when you add in the metallic and kind of these lighter shades of red, it really brings it all together. So I was thinking it might be kind of nice to add some metallic on these edges here. And you don't have to stay, like I could, I guess I don't have to stay in the pinks, but I kind of like the pinks. I'm going to do this light one again. I like that color. So I'm just going to add it right here. I think I'm going to add some little stripes in here, little metallics. Now I think I'm gonna add my metallic in here. All right, so with the green one, I think, still wanna do kind of a metallic-y top, but I'm gonna do a little bit different. I'm gonna try really light yellow gold. And I'm going to take my size two tenths brush and I'm just going to make a series of small and less small dots. So kind of, and just almost, I'm just going to like cover it basically. So there's no rhyme or reason. It's just letting the paintbrush fall at the pressure it is. And just to kind of give the illusion that it's fully covered. But then when you look at it closer, it's, you realize it's just a bunch of tiny dots. Pointillism, I guess, is what we're doing. And then what I like to do is come in with a different color and kind of add, fill in a little bit more to where it needs it. Because we're using this to define, it's important to get to the edge because that's how people know where the ornament ends. All right. Looks good. Good start so far. Okay, with this one, I think I'm going to do a little bit more of the geometric stuff. So one of the ones that I like to do is kind of a um, zigzag. So I think I'm going to do that in this copper color. 
And the, I like to do this one because basically you just start at the top and so you know exactly where to angle. You just follow it up. Let's see. Down and up. Right. And then just to make it a little more interesting, I like to thicken this part. That is not the part that I usually thicken. <laughs> I usually thicken this part. But today, we are going to thicken this part. Oh, there we go. That's pretty. So one of my other favorite ones to do is a squiggle. I think I'm gonna do it in the lighter shade. You can either start from the top and make it big. You can start in the middle. I think I'm gonna start in the middle because I'm gonna do green lines on the other side too. I was just wondering if I should do those first, but we will move with this. So you just kinda peaks and valleys. And then we'll just do the same. pattern on this one. Okay. That's lovely. I think I'm going to do one. I think I'm going to do a small gold line through here. And then one of the other techniques, I don't know how noticeable it is, that I like to do is take two shades of green and kind of do a, I don't know, a bleeding pattern where you start with one color and then you grab another color and so it makes kind of like a tie-dyed fade. Go back to your original color Finish like that one, and then we can start with that one here. Go to the dark one, alternate. I just think it makes for a cool visual. I think what I'm gonna do here on these is try and do one stripe of the all of these kind of little small ones here. I'm gonna try and kind of create it as I go. I just really like this effect. It's kind of the, this year is the first year I've done it because I made these cards last year. And I didn't, last year I didn't do the background so I didn't do this kind of lighter color in the back. I just started painting on the colors. So it was white in the back. And then this pointi pointillism part on the top, I was like, that is so pretty. Just like eye catching for me, to me. Okay. I'm thinking this needs something here and here. So I think I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna add this light, really light gold. And I think I'm gonna do stripes. Maybe I can just do, have a little more space up here, so maybe I might just be able to get away with one. All right, I think I'm gonna do here, I'm also gonna do some dots, small, bigger. Okay, 
to do lines just to kind of anchor this. And I'm using a lot of metallic, but these lines could be a darker green. They don't have to be. Maybe we should do that. Let's try it with a darker green. And I'm not gonna try an exact, cause these, these aren't really, these lines aren't very straight. So I'm not gonna try and exactly do it. I'm just going to, oh, maybe I should just, in order to crisp this up, I can do that. course and then I get wobbly. Okay. That's pretty. Maybe with the same green I can do some polka dots in here. In the valleys and the peaks. I like that. I kind of think those are finished. I think this one I can move on to do the topper, but I'm gonna have to turn it upside down. <laughs> and so I usually like to find the middle and then my topper, you know, I just kind of make the middle, the middle of the topper line up to the middle of the ornament. So I think we said we were gonna do the true gold, but I think I like the light gold for the for this one. And this one I just do kind of, you know, you can do curved edges, kind of like parentheses, and then dome it. You can do you can do them straight, square, flat. You can even do them patterned because a lot of times they are in real life, IRL. Then you just do a little circle. You need it at the top. You can draw a bow, anything like that, but I just leave it simple. There's already a lot going on. I guess I'll just do the same topper I usually do, but for some reason I was thinking the, the uh, copper would be pretty on this one, but I don't know. I like the consistency of the same color. Okay, so just kind of Round it out. Beautiful. And if you wanted to leave, sometimes these toppers have the scalloped edges. So you could always not even paint this top part and kind of make your edges scalloped and it could also be part of the top decoration there. So the possibilities are endless. All right, so that is how we create beautiful handmade ornaments, replica handmade ornaments, <laughs> handmade. And the beauty of it is they can be any patterns, any colors, I love for these, I love adding these this little star uh, stamp I have and I do embossing powder on it with a greeting and the greeting can be anywhere. The bottom, at the top, wherever you have room for. You can hand write the greeting. You can do the stars in watercolor. This is basically the shape. It comes out looking like this, but that's the stamp shape. You could do splatter. You could splatter the metallic. You could splatter these colors. You can get the background wet first and then splatter and it just kind of makes like a, just a real interesting background effect as far as faded and, and almost like the camera. Thank you for joining me today. If y'all want to see how I actually turn this into a card and do the embossing powder and the greeting and how I frame it on the card stock and all of that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments below. I will show you how I make a complete card, but I just figured it was going to be watercolor. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate all of your efforts and all of your comments and all of your love and I feel it. And I'm so happy that 
hopefully I can pass it back to you. So anyway, thank you. See you next time. Bye.